Hey everybody, coming up on Sports Central, the boys of summer are here. Zach Burek from the Detroit Tigers. We have Rob Sitz from Russ Matt Baseball and the inimitable Roy Fuco from the Ledger. Stick around for this edition of Sports Central. Hey everybody and welcome to Sports Central. I'm Mark Jackson to my right, Mr. Neil Duncan. Hey, yeah, we, right. yeah, we kicked Hank Longo to the curb, at least for this show. He's getting ready for Pig Fest. Smoke on the water. Smoke on the water. Yep. Pig Fest is in Lakeland. Yeah, better, yep. Yeah, I like, I've got swine of the brain, I guess. I'm not quite sure what it is. But anyway, thanks for joining us, everybody. Great edition of Sports Central. And uh, Neil, we have somebody to thank for this particular segment. Yeah, the Hampton Inn and Barto, a fine uh, and great partner of Tourism Sports Marketing, so we appreciate their partnership. Now I've heard that uh, you're so busy, you've been passing yourself in the hallway on occasion. Uh, lots going on in uh, the world of sports here in Polk County. It's yeah. unbelievable. Well, our entire staff and uh, mm -hmm. is doing a fantastic job and, you know, these events, as you, as you like to say, and, and we want to remind those at home, they don't just show up. They're recruited. You have to foster those relationships. It's competitive environment, really competitive. Very competitive environment, not only in Florida, but in warm weather destinations and then during the summer in all destinations. So um, we're very, very blessed here in Polk County, but it also takes great uh, partners and we have one in this first segment. Absolutely, we've done a great job there. Well, speaking of first, as in segment, the Detroit Tigers, the boys of summer mm -hmm. are back, at least the pitchers and catchers. And what an opportunity to visit with the man in the know who actually works for the Tigers and the Lakeland Flying Tigers, and that is Mr. Zach Burek. And, you know, Zach, uh, when it comes to baseball, you're just like a, a baseball dictionary. You know what's going on, <laughs> what, you know, when it's going on and everything else, sometimes before the players do. What's it looking like this year for the Tigers? I mean, it's an exciting spring. I know there's been a few changes with the team this year. Yeah, absolutely, and thanks for having me. And, um, you know, looking forward to celebrating the Tigers' 84th uh, season in Lakeland. Um, by far the, the longest relationship between a spring training host city and a Major League Baseball team. So basically uh, since our arrival in 1934, minus a couple years uh, for World War II where teams didn't travel, uh, been here in beautiful Lakeland, Florida. And, uh, you know, you mentioned partnerships, and obviously you can't be the, uh, somewhere that long without the relationships with uh, the city of Lakeland and obviously Polk County Tourism and Sports Marketing and the TDC and Board of County Commissioners, uh, the state of Florida and public supermarkets is most re recently with our la latest renovation. So uh, with the enhancements with the facilities, we're open year-round year now. So even though pitchers and catchers report next week and position players a few days after that, players are in town. There's probably over 100 players already here. Um, mm -hmm. utilizing the facilities, utilizing the, utilizing the backfields, the batting cages, the training rooms, the locker rooms, um, all the enhancements with video and technology. So um, we're excited. Um, we got uh, a lot of young prospects, signed uh, some veteran players to the team. Um, so it's exciting. And, you know, to, to be able to open up and, and play in a, in a couple weeks here, actual games is, uh, is pretty, uh, it, it, it's hard to believe, right? Um, yeah, but at the same time, you know, it's Super Bowl lands and you're like, all right, baseball, you're up next. And yeah. here we are. Yeah, next man up. Yeah. Yeah, and you talk about 84 years uh, in Polk County, in Lakeland, um, and, and over the years have seen championship teams and then rebuilding, and, and of course it's no secret that uh, the Tigers organization is in the midst of a rebuild, uh, but that's one of the draws for, for Lakeland and Polk County is the fact that uh, whether it's the Flying Tigers, some of this talent, you know, we've seen over the years, the Justin Verlanders of the organization, of course he went on with the, the Astros, but not only do you get to see them up close and personal for spring training, but we also get to see that talent with the Flying Tigers so it, it's an exciting time, though it may not be in the wins and losses. It's an exciting time within the organization to be able to see these players right here in Polk County. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the history of the Florida State League, when you go back to 1919 and, and, the, and Lakeland as a franchise being an original member of, of that league, the, the talent level that has come in and out of there. I mean, you look, you know, people are always excited about the Yankees coming to town for spring training, right? And you look at Stanton and Judge and Torres and Sanchez, you know, the, the, the top four guys you could say on their team all came through the Florida State League, you know, mm -hmm. went playing through Tampa. So you're right, Neil. You're, you're seeing every game, every day out there, 
you may not know the name at that time, right? But you know down the road that um, they've got special talent. And and to see our players, you know, the the Casey Mises and the Tariq Scoobles and the Matt Mannings and Bo Burrows, mm -hmm. Riley Green, who if if he doesn't start with the Lakeland Flying Tigers this season, um, will be up at some point. Uh, it says a lot about the future of the organization. I mean, we're a top 10 team uh, rated by Baseball America with our prospects. I think four or five guys within the top 50. So, um, so uh, the wins and losses have, have been tough you know, the last few years, but the, the future is very, very bright um, mm -hmm. with our talent, the, the trades that we've made. You know, mentioned Verlander and some other guys. So um, the pieces are there to be able to compete this year and then set the, uh, a nice foundation for the future. Right, absolutely. Well, you know, the thing, in, uh, the thing is in Detroit, well, you know, here as well, they have a very loyal fan base. You know, it's there's some professional team, you can pick uh, football, but, you know, some baseball teams, if they're winning, people are attending. If they're losing, they're not there. But it seems in Detroit, you see a little trickle when, when this, the uh, record isn't that great, but overall, I really think that uh, Detroit fans are very loyal fans overall and have been for years. They have, and, and it translates down here to, to Lakeland, right? When, mm -hmm. you know, as soon as the, the, ske the spring training schedule is announced, you know, we're getting those calls right away. People are making their plans to come down for spring training to come down and enjoy all the, be all the benefits of being right here in Polk County. You know, uh, people talk all the time of Tampa, Orlando, and the Disney stuff, but we have world-class attractions, as you guys know, right here in our backyard to, to be able to enjoy. So coming down here, the up close and personal aspect you have with you know the players and be able to come out there and watch them on the backfields and practice and be able to you know buy a ticket at an affordable price and bring your family out um, is all part of that. You're right. The, the fan base is extremely loyal and the local community supports that as well. I mean, the events that we have leading up, you know, the, the Tiger Barbecue um, uh, communities around the state of Florida and Arizona are jealous of those events. How do you, how do you put out an event like that in the Major League Scramble Golf Tournament? Mm -hmm. um, so these are all the events and, 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 and that the, the, the community really rallies around. And again, goes back to that relationship and being somewhere for 84 years that this is, it used to be kind of a, lot, a, winter, ho a winter home away from home, but it's, it's our second home. It's because we're open year round. We have players that are on our complex during 65 days a year, either playing games or rehabbing or getting better and developing their skills for the future. Well, you know, Ron Myers talks about it a lot in that, you know, like you said, this is a 365 day a year major business. It just so happens to be a major league baseball team that is here. And, you know, if somebody gets injured up in Detroit, where do they come? They come back to mm -hmm. Lakeland to rehab, to, you know, recondition, reorient, and uh, then it's right back up to Detroit. It is, absolutely. And and the amenities and facilities now, right, of, of especially as it relates to training and the, tr the nutrition and the health and the science behind all that, right? Um, all of those were taken into account when we renovated this stadium um, a few years back. And, you know, so the player amenities, um, even when you look at the minor league guys like the Flying Tigers, mm -hmm. um, I could go down to the locker room or clubhouse or anything about 30 minutes after a game four, five, six years ago, and it'd be a ghost town. You may see the, the clubhouse guy cleaning up a little bit, but now you go down there, Guys are eating, we're providing spreads after the game. They may be in the video room watching video of themselves uh, uh, from that game in the training room or in the whirlpool or the swim X machine. Um, uh, so they're there, I mean, an hour, two hours after a game, um, and you didn't see that before. But it's that, it's that technology, the amenities, um, again, that all goes back. At the end of the day, you know, the, we're here in Lakeland to develop players at the minor league level and the major league level, and all of those bells and whistles that we have to make that happen are important now. Absolutely. Well, you we talked about relationships. A new relationship was formed uh, last year with the exhibition game against Southeastern. What a, a great environment that was. That game is coming up on February 21st before you start the, uh, the Grapefruit League schedule. Real quick, how can people get tickets, get information, and again, family friendly very affordable and right on top of the action. There's no better place. Absolutely, yes. So so uh, you can uh, stop by the box office, the Baycare box office at Publix Field at Joker Marchant Stadium. Uh, you can uh, visit us online, www.detroittigers.com slash spring training. All the information is on there, all of our game schedule. You mentioned February 21st against Southeastern University. What a great uh, local celebration of mm -hmm. baseball, right? Um, last year we had almost 5,000 people attend that game. And these are games that are going 
teams because of the scheduling and the number of off days and, and how the schedule falls, uh, there's not many teams that are playing a, a college or university locally. So we're, we're one of the five, I think, that are doing that. So what a great celebration of local baseball. They've been a great partner. And we look forward to 17 major league games, including Yankees, Red Sox, the both World Series participants last year with Houston and, and Washington. So very good schedule for fans to come out and check us out. Yeah, and this year, for the first time in a very long time, a night game, correct? Absolutely. So uh, March 19th against the Miami Marlins, a 6.05 start. Um, it worked out schedule-wise. They were able to do that, and it comes towards the end of spring training, so hopefully a nice weather day. But uh, a chance for those local folks that maybe can't get out you know, for a 1 o'clock local uh, start and work, school, everything, to come out and watch a night game. Well, I know we're going to have you back before the Flying Tigers mm -hmm. are taking the field and uh, once spring training is over. My big question every single year is real simple. Thirsty Thursdays. It's back. We're it's good. Back. You're good. Yeah. Well, you're good. I, I, I was petitioning, <laughs> griping. I want Thirsty Thursdays, and they brought it. We've back. even expanded a little bit. For Tuesdays, we do uh, taco and margarita Tuesday. So if you want a margarita and some tacos, you can come out on Tuesday, too. So we, we got a different drink special almost every single night of the week. But they, definitely Thirsty Thursdays. They, back. We, we, they, we don't Im imbibe in, in alcoholic beverages, do we, Mr. Duncan? No, no. <laughs> Straight arrows. <laughs> As, did they, you know I have to take a shot, right? Did they have these specials 84 years ago when you were working at the ballpark? <laughs> I was waiting for you to ask him if, how was it when the Tigers arrived in 1934? I was, I was trying so hard to not do it, and I just had to. So, uh, 84 years ago when you were 20, um, <laughs> working for the Tigers. Their pretty first pretty exciting coming out of the Great Depression. They come to Lakeland, yep. <laughs> I'll go ahead and pack my office up. <laughs> or I was going to say you'll be working all weekend. So that's, right, that's right, that's right. Uh, but do it, anyway, right? It, yeah. Well, it, it is exciting, and, and you talk about the relationship and um, kind of the catalyst, because we talk about this all the time. When you look at the fine organizations that have been recruited uh, or have been in Polk County or the longstanding events, it adds further credibility to going out and getting new pieces of business and getting new uh, organizations to relocate uh, to Polk County. So this Real is, quick, let's, let's, yeah. uh, let's make an announcement about the Major League Scramble and the Tigers barbecue because those are events that are open to the public mm -hmm. and people can uh, attend those, see the players, get autographs, do all that yeah, type Tiger stuff. Barbecue, what dates are those? February 19th yep, um, and then the 20th is a major league scramble. So uh, the scramble is a little bit different. On the 19th, you'll need to reach out to the Lakeland Chamber of Commerce uh, for tickets for that. If you want to be a participant in the scramble, you can reach out to Tourism Sports Marketing directly at 863-551-4750. And we're selling barbecue tickets at the uh, stadium, too. So oh, yeah. People, oh, people, fantastic. So if you get oh, your tickets for a game, you can buy a ticket for the barbecue and yeah. come out and have fun. And then uh, the 21st, are fantastic. you get tickets for the Southeastern. Mm -hmm. and then 5,000 people last year. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. Was a, it was great to see. A sea of red out there, local support of a local university. It was awesome. And they do understand they're not supposed to win, right? <laughs> your, your, your agreement doesn't get rid Well, we've seen that in other locations. We have, absolutely, yes. Yeah. I hope it's competitive for there everyone. We want it to be competitive. We'll say that. There you go. Well, All thanks right. so much. Zach, thanks so much Thank for joining guys. us. Appreciate absolutely. it. And uh, best of luck this year. Hope that uh, that record improves. And, I, in fact, I know it will. Absolutely. So that's, that's good stuff. Thank well, you. everybody, you know, sort of a, going from traditional sports, stick and ball sports, to mm -hmm. non-traditional. You ever watch Harry Potter or heard of Harry Potter? Well, there's a sport that sort of emanated from that, mm -hmm. and it's called Quidditch. Mm -hmm. These people running around uh, a field, it's kind of like basketball, soccer, uh, lacrosse, all in one. We have some great footage because the Southeast Regional Championships, championships are coming up here in a week. Here's a little preview of what you're going to see out at Lake Myrtle. Check it out, everybody. We'll be back right after this.
regional championship. So there's teams from all over our south, um, primarily Florida. We also have a South Carolina team here that are competing for two things. They're competing for the regional championship title, and then they're also competing for a bid to our national championship in April. We have 88 teams competing, 64 collegiate teams, and 24 club teams. So um, five, uh, five teams from colleges in the south are going to be competing at the national championship in, April. Um, in Round Rock, Texas, April 13th and 14th. Inspired by the Harry Potter series and it was first played in 2005. So in the past 14 years, it's developed immensely. We've had a lot of changes to the rules, a lot of adaptations, um, but it's a full contact, mixed gender sport that kind of grows and changes each year. So at any given time, each team can have six or seven people on the field. There's people who are taking the quaffle, which is a volleyball, and they're going through the hoop, and it can go through either side for 10 points. And then there's people that have bludgers, um, which are dodgeballs, and if that hits you, um, you have to drop the ball you're holding, run back, touch your hoop, takes you out for a few seconds. Um, so that's, that's most of it. Most of the scoring is that back and forth, those 10 points per goal. And then we also have um, the snitch runner will come out. So it's a neutral athlete, one of our officials um, that's dressed, um, they have yellow shorts on with a sock and a tennis ball in it. Grabbing that is 30 points and ends the game. It's a very, it's a very intense sport. Um, our contact is similar to rugby, for example. Um, so there's tackling involved, there's wrapping. Um, we have a pretty extensive rule set um, and pretty detailed rules, but there is tackling involved, um, just a lot of a lot of both athleticism and um, physical play as well. Our teams are collegiate teams um, and so of those there's definitely a good number that are club sports at their university and really are playing competitively at a high level. Uh, we also have a number of schools that play um, at a less competitive level and still compete officially with us. We also have a lot of teams that compete um, not officially through the league but play throughout the year in smaller tournaments so people will host tournaments that have um, either a lower competition level or just kind of a different goal for the tournament. Um, so pretty much any level that people are interested in, we have that. Um, then we also have our club teams, so those are our community teams um, that are primarily people who graduated college. Um, this weekend we only have collegiate teams, so it's just our college athletes competing. Um, we have some people who play on our community, our club teams in the south um, that are here as coaches for the teams, but they'll be competing at an event in Texas next weekend. So it's just collegiate teams here this weekend competing for the collegiate title. with Polk County Sports Marketing is incredible. Um, they've been really supportive of us. We had an event here a few years ago and had a great experience. It was at this sports park as well. Um, and we was really impressed with the like, Marshall Sports Park and um, just everything it has to offer and the facility maintenance. Um, so we've just, we've loved it here and the support they've had has been um, invaluable. We hear really great positive feedback from our athletes about it. Um, obviously, all the basics, like the turf quality um, here, the grass is impeccable and um, just overall equality. I think it really impresses our athletes when they drive into the facility to see what a nice facility it is. Um, and then there's just so many little perks we can, we can offer teams at a facility like this. So for example here, we're able to give each team use of a pop-up tent over the weekend through our partnership with Polk County Sports Marketing, which is incredible. And our teams really appreciate those little touches that we're able to do here. Hey everybody, welcome back. Segment number two, Sports Central, and uh, that Quidditch stuff is pretty cool. Yeah, a great event, and uh, we're going to be going uh, and actively recruiting their national championships, hopefully in the near future here to Polk County, so we're excited about that. Sort but of have an in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this segment brought to us by BSN Sports, a great partner of Tourism and Sports Marketing, so we want to thank them. And I don't mean a broom in between our legs, but we have a contact in. Yeah. The organization. So yeah, absolutely. A good one. We're very excited. Real excited about it. Wow. Baseball. Major League Baseball spring training.
coming up here in just a, well less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. No, two weeks from today is the first game. Yeah, absolutely the first, very first game against Southeastern. Mm -hmm. But not to be outdone, and they certainly aren't outdone. The largest spring training where the games actually count, okay, is held right here in Polk County. It's called the Russ Matt Baseball Spring Invitational. 270 odd, I shouldn't say odd teams. That's More than 270 teams, teams, yeah. Plus teams. Yeah. Here to talk about it, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Rob Seitz. And Rob, um, you know, nobody. Did we get BSN Sports in there? I did. I can do it again. If you <laughs> <laughs> Take two. We'll be right back. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you know, Rob, it uh, continues to grow under your leadership, and uh, DS Holdings have just, you guys have taken it to a new level. Um, so much so that uh, uh, adding a new quad uh, up at the Northeast Regional Park and redoing the Chain of Lakes Baseball Complex, uh, Man, this thing, is is there an end in sight? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we'll see. I mean, I, I will say it's an attestment to what you guys do as well and our restaurant and our lodging partners. I mean, everybody's involved with the overall experience of these coaches coming down. And that's a really, you know, since I've taken over, I, the number one focus is just making sure the coaches are taken care of in all of their needs. Um, and again, you guys are a, a tremendous part of that as, as well. So, um, you know, I do think that we'll continue to grow. I, I'm very excited about the uh, new quad at Northeast Regional Park there as well. Um, we were just talking about it, but the location is just going to be amazing for these teams. Just a quick, uh, you know, five minute commute for probably 80% of the teams there, which yeah. is very exciting. Um, so I, I, I anticipate the numbers to uh, continue to rise, uh, surprisingly with, you know, the numbers that we already have. But, I mean, I, I do uh, see more and more teams interested in coming to uh, Russ Matt. Well, for, you know, Rob and, and, and Mark, it, it's amazing to see the growth over the 10 years, you know, of, of the event being here. Uh, a lot Started of people, with 185 teams. I mean, a lot of people don't remember that... Um, this opportunity was recruited to Polk County after the Cleveland Indians left and, and went right. to Arizona when there was a number of teams that were leaving and doing that. And the amount of economic impact, the the amount of, you know, we just had Zach here with the Tigers and spring training uh, impact, but your impact is huge for Polk County and people may not understand that, but just, I want to say thank you uh, uh, <laughs> first and foremost, but partnerships and, and you, you guys certainly have multiple uh, dealings, multiple events and things like that, but I don't know if there's a, a better partnership uh, anywhere in the country than the, what the, our two organizations have because it's no small feat to pull off this type of event, is it? It's it's a lot of work. A lot of, uh, you know, really a lot of people don't understand, but we schedule every one of these games. Every matchup is scheduled between. Yeah. How many games know, do you anticipate this year? I think we're at 1,068 to be precise right now, um, but that will obviously change. And, and, uh, but who's counting, right? But who's counting, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but finding the field for all of that, you know, sure. I mean, we're just spread out all over uh, Polk County, um, you know, this year. But the, the finding the matchups, I mean, when they, I mean, they rely on us to find those matchups. And obviously, with the numbers we have, it actually helps out a lot compared to some of our competitors mm -hmm. is, you know, we're able to get that 500 team, another 500 team. They're not playing, you know, an 800 winning percentage versus a 300 winning percentage team. So it's very important to, uh, you know, find those matchups. They play a very competitive schedule. We have a lot. It's something I always hype on. I mean, we, we if you look at the D3 rankings right now, we have mm -hmm. a ton of the top teams. The JUCO, we had a national championship from Division Two, national championship from Division Three teams. So we got a lot of teams that are competing in their World Series at the different uh, levels there as well. So very cool. You know, Rob, one of the things that um, so many, it, I always find this so interesting because the locals will find out when I say the locals are Polk County's residents, course, citizens. Yeah. And uh, there was a former commissioner, Jean Reed, that was just in love with Russ Matt Baseball because her alma mater, mm -hmm. I mean, and um, she's a little older than 30, or was at the time. <laughs> she's probably in her 50s at the time. But... You know, those ties back to your alma mater are very strong, you know, as even later in life. But I always remember that because she went to, I don't know how many games, and I, but I don't remember what college it was. But I've run into so many people. Oh, are such and such a team? Are those guys coming? Are such and, you know? But you hear it all 
the time. And for so sure. it's, it's so important for the locals too, that hey, they, they wanna go see, you know, whatever, you know, University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, you know, or it could be uh, the New York, something. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it actually, I mean, that's a very good point. And they also, a lot of them are putting alumni events on why they're down here right, as yeah. well. So yeah. they're either doing that at the hotel, at the game, a lot, you know, a lot of, uh, you see it in the parking lot of uh, Lake Myrtle sometimes, mm -hmm. right. or you got a little alumni event and then go watch the game. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's really, it is really cool to see. I mean, it, it, there's a good chance if you went to school in the Northeast or the Midwest that your team's coming down to uh, right. Russ Matt at some point. So, you know, definitely check out that schedule and come see your alma mater for well, sure. Well, I had a buddy of mine, Steve Tebon, mm -hmm. from uh, down in Boca Raton. Well, his brother was coaching the Ames, Iowa College. I think it's Ames College or whatever it was. And uh, he was driving all the way up with his dad and, and a couple other guys just to watch his brother coach. Yeah. You know, and it's if it's just, Carl, Carl Tebon, probably from uh, yeah. Lowrass, uh, yeah. Iowa. Um, well, that, but, that's yeah. knowing the, knowing the, <laughs> knowing the, the associations. Yeah. Well, I think, I think the, the one thing that we need to point out is the fact that, just like the Tigers, the Tigers is not just spring training for six weeks and they're gone. It's a year-round presence. Our relationship with, you know, uh, just extended this relationship now, uh, so 14 more years, 15 if you can include this year, of Rust Matt. But the relationship goes beyond that. There's other events, so it's not just a window of the spring. There's other events, so these facilities yeah, we talk about, about that. and, yeah, and, right. and, and year-round presence of baseball, uh, this economic impact is multi-million dollars within this partnership. For sure. I mean, yeah, under our uh, DS Sports Ventures, um, you know, we've got Prospect Wire, which mm -hmm. is one of the nation's leading, uh, you know, really the high school kids getting seen tournaments, you know, there. And then Nations, uh, Greater Orlando Baseball is our youth uh, platform mm -hmm. as well. And mm -hmm. we're running, you know, 50 weeks a year with this great weather we have um, down here with a lot of a lot of teams. And, and honestly, during this same time frame, there's a lot of teams coming in, right. you know, youth teams coming in, during, you know, down here uh, for our tournaments as well. So it's a, it's a great relationship. We actually have uh, one weekend where we have some space which is very rare during rust map but we have a couple fields that are going to be used for some 13 and 14 U uh, teams during the rust map so they're going to get to play right alongside the college players oh, wow. uh, during that same time well, that's as impactful. well yeah. it, it's huge I mean for them kind of eye-opening experience for those 13 and 14 year olds to see that there's all these schools. I mean, it was an eye-opening experience for me when I got involved with this. All these schools, right? And, yeah. You know, not you know, being a Florida guy my my whole life, I didn't know a lot of these uh, schools existed. But um, it's definitely going to be a great experience for those uh, 13 and 14 year old players playing alongside. Well, of course, the hub, as you know, Mr. Jackson, uh, Channel Lakes Park and in, in Winter Haven, and then the Lake Myrtle Sports Park. But as you you mentioned, uh, multiple other facilities at kind of the height of it. So we do want to thank Dan Talbot of the Polk County School Board, and yes. uh, of course uh, Josh Hicks. We can't we'd be remiss Josh without talking great. about Josh yeah. and his great work. Um, but talk about the the daily passes or maybe price of admission. If if people want to go and experience this at any one of those locations, what what, what do they need? To know? For sure, yeah, RussMed.com um, is the place to go to find. Okay. The schedule and, and all that also have the ticket prices there, but it's ten dollars for a daily pass. It, you know, if you go to if you go to Lake Myrtle, a lot of times you're going to be able to see thirty different games right. being played each each one of those days. Mm -hmm. um, but that gets them to any park on on one day. Oh, it's just not uh, that one location. Just then. no, you can. So go if you want to go over to Chain of Lakes or exactly. Henley Field or whatever, you can do that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You can come check out some games in the morning at Lake Myrtle and go over to the stadium games over at Chain of Lakes that night as well. They all have uh, dates with those passes and everything. But we do have a lot of uh, Polk County residents take us up on the hundred dollar all you know the whole event pass six um, weeks six weeks we're starting february 14th with our first games actually boston college in northern illinois at chain of lake stadium there so really yeah we've got boston a lot of, college huh? boston college is coming in and this northern year. illinois those are two big schools exactly probably two regional regional teams i mean yeah. very good uh, programs there so we're excited to uh you know got a, a lot more division one teams coming coming down now over the last few years so it's uh it's very good and, and again it's a lot of good quality quality uh, baseball being played out there, various, all these different colleges, but you can go to get that event pass and you can go to all the different uh, fields that we have games. The one that jumps off the paper to me, and I think this is just absolutely genius on your part uh, in development, because it's always about in sports, it's always about the development and yeah. keeping the, the sport moving forward. Kids 12 and under, 
free. Absolutely free. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a you know it's a huge thing, obviously, to provide that, but also for these kids to be exposed to all of these college programs out there. I mean, again, from the Florida perspective, uh, Florida State, Florida, Miami. You know, you think mm -hmm. of those schools, you mm -hmm. don't think about all these yeah. Division three incredibly high academic schools that right. you know. Uh, New York University, NYU is is a big D three uh, program. You know, there's a lot of those great academic schools that come down here. So it's well, as you always like to point out, most of these schools haven't even seen green grass by they, the time they get down here. So oh, and they, it's, it's, this, is, this is hilarious. It's a true, yeah. true story. It happens every single year. <coughs> Kids come down, they get off the bus, take their shoes off, and then walk out on the field barefoot because they haven't put their feet on green grass Six in months. months. Yeah, 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 because yeah. it's, you know, you, you do that, you're going to have frostbite up in <laughs> yes, you know, yeah, a lot of times Duluth, been, Minnesota. Yeah, it's been four or five months since they've been out on a field. They've been throwing in the cages. They've yeah. been taking mm -hmm. ground balls in, indoors and all of that. And the big thing for them, most of them always will schedule a practice first because they want to get on there and take batting practice and see how far the ball's actually traveling. Yeah. And then for those outfielders to actually read fly balls because they don't really, you know, when you're indoors, you don't get to right. see those fly balls. Tracking and yeah. all that. 1,068 games this year. So, schedule so far. I'm sure there'll be more. <laughs> How many balls do you go through a year? Well, we, the uh, te uh, teams actually provide their own balls. Thank, thank God. Um, otherwise, <laughs> it would be a, a lot of tracking down these balls right. and all of that kind of stuff. But <laughs> I, I mean, I would imagine it's dozen and a half, you know, per game there. Yeah. So it's a, it's well. a number of. Uh, uh, baseballs for sure. Yeah. Well, we we're thrilled to have you guys <laughs> back again. We're looking forward to it, and and uh, you've got some new digs over at Lake Myrtle too. I'm looking forward to that. I, I want to go uh, check it out. Actually, while I'm while you're going to really here, enjoy so. that. I'm yeah. I'm excited about yeah, it. So. New little office there yep. and storage yep. and everything else. Rob, thanks a million for being here. Thanks for all you do for Polk County and the citizens yep. and the businesses. Um, you are uh, loved here greatly, <laughs> yep, and very much uh, appreciated. looking forward to 15 more years working with you guys. Thank Absolutely, you. and hopefully many more. And thank you guys for all you guys do. I mean, you guys do a great job. Well, you're welcome. Well, everybody, we uh, we can go from Major League Baseball to the premier collegiate and largest collegiate baseball event in the world here in Polk County. Not to be outdone, at least in terms of prestige. Yeah. But USA softball. The U.S. team was here in Polk County last week on their start, the start of their, uh, she's headed to Tokyo for 2020 Olympics. 2020 and Olympics, and we are excited for them, but we had some great action from their practice at Florida Southern College last week. Check this out on the beginning of the tour to the gold medal. Check it out. You know, this is a pretty special team. Uh, you've got uh, 18 um, really phenomenal people that play softball. And so if you can get the, the, the best 18 together and spend as much time as we're gonna spend together over the next 220 days, uh, it gives yourself a chance to win in a locker room and a dugout, which obviously is gonna give you a chance to win on a ball field, and I think we have that. first day so this Olympic experience has been phenomenal I mean everyone just the energy of everyone coming in yesterday we all got together and we went to dinner together and it was like we haven't been apart so it was it was pretty exciting and coming out today and being able to get on the field and I mean I'm from Michigan so being outside on dirt it you know it feels good ready to get it rolling <laughs> Team physics, chemistry, dynamics, you know, uh, all of it right now is, is, is at a really, really high uh, pitch right now. And I think that's because they've spent a lot of time together in the past three, four years, and now they have a defined, you know, objective. And uh, that, that makes it a lot easier for athletes.
the experience with all of us, I mean, some of us, like I've played with Val and Mish since 2012, so it's been a, it's been a minute. Um, some of the girls started in like 2013. I would say a good chunk of us have all played together for the like the last six six years at least. Some actually played college ball together, so there's definitely a wide range. And um, but I mean, everyone's known each other, been in like the tryouts, you know, just the USA like you know family for a while now. So. Uh, no way. I mean, we probably have the most experienced team internationally that we've had in a long, long time. These guys have been playing international ball since 2011. Uh, you know, they've been in a world. We have like four or five players that have been in world championships. You know, four or five times at least. We have two Olympians that are on our team. So, you've got a lot of players that have come through our program and played USA softball. Uh, it's very rare that you get to have an Olympic program without having experience. You know, and uh, we're fortunate that the, everybody on our team has had that experience. Once Japan got announced that it was going to be in the Olympics, we've gone to Japan every year since. So I've been to Japan and I play professionally in Japan. So I've been to Japan probably like eight or nine times and just getting used to that culture and all that. We've played in Italy, we've been to the Netherlands, like Canada, like we've been all over the place, Dominican, Puerto Rico. So we've gotten to experience a lot of a lot of things and we're extremely fortunate to be able to travel all around the world and, and do what we love. So it's been out since 2008. This will be the first, 2020 is the first one since 2008. So that's huge. And in Japan, they love baseball and softball. So it's huge there. So it's, it's exciting for it to be back then. It stinks that it's not gonna be in, you know, the, the next one in France, but it should get back in the one after that, hopefully. But um, it's not gonna stop us. I feel like we gained so much momentum since 2008, kind of like took a little dip and we've gained so much. Like, I, I don't see it going back down. I really think that the energy is there for the sport and it's gonna continue to grow. And, you know, right now we just got, we just partnered with the MLB. So they're gonna, I feel like that's gonna help the energy, more people following softball. Everyone loves softball. So I just, more people on board. And I think be great for the sport. I, you know, uh, to, to all the young kids uh, that aspire to be Olympians, to all the young kids that even aspire to get to college, and they have a dream to go to every level along the way, I think the best thing to, to talk about is if it's not fun, then, then forget it, okay? Because these players, every day they come out here, it's like the first time they put the uniform on. Not like play it as hard as you want because it's the last game and have that pet. Play it like you're a little girl. You know, we've got 34 year old women that are playing it like they're six years old playing, you know, pony ball for the first time. And, and it's a game. And keep that in perspective and keep it positive and, and be at it. And the next part about our game, if it doesn't work today, it's gonna work tomorrow. Just keep at it. Just keep at it and have fun, man. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Segment number three of Sports Central. If you're just joining us, I'm Mark Jackson. To my right, Mr. Neil Duncan. And Neil, yes, great sir. to be sitting in Hank's seat, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's uh, you, you guys are the A team, and, and I'm just the sub, so uh, I'm not I'm sure just, I'd put it that I'm way. I'm just trying but, uh, to uh, keep we, it keep it afloat. Well, you're a busy guy these days, particularly with uh, the Tournament of Champions going on, yep. and you got your hands full with that, and Russ Mad Baseball teams. coming up. That's right. Um, Two Tigers coming up. Teams. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's a lot it's, of teams. It's good. Just, it was nonstop, and that's that's just a, a fraction of the events that are happening in Polk County this spring. Sure. Make sure you check out Visit Central Florida. Dot org for all the latest and the greatest in the sports, arts and culture, and uh, everything else that's happening in Polk. Visit yep. centralflorida.org. You yep. can get all the events and everything else. Yes, sir. We want to thank Hollywood Signs, our great partner for this segment of Sports Central. Absolutely. Well, you know, we talked about the inimitable Roy Fuco at the beginning of the show, and uh, that is true. Roy is with the Ledger, and uh, one of the staff writers has been for years. Roy, how long have you been with the Ledger, by the way? Uh, well, I got there in 2002, and then I had a brief period where right. I was away from it, but I've been back full time for eight years, I guess. So. Okay. So 16 total, I guess. Wow, <laughs> that's 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 pretty amazing. Track and then, uh, then I was obviously in Winter Haven for. <laughs> 10 years, you know, sports editor over the news chief. So. News chief, yeah. Well, that's still Not up a lot. <laughs> yeah, under, underneath the uh, underneath the ledger umbrella. But, uh, you know, a lot going on here at high school sports and uh, other, you know, not even just the academic-related sports, but other things as well. And uh, let's kick it off real quick with uh, weightlifting. Sounds like we've uh, we've got some champions here on our hands. Yeah, the, the, girl, it's the girls that's going on, um, and... Um, Lakeland, I can't remember her name. Lakeland has a really good one. Uh, Lake Wales is Faith Garza, is uh, has really come on this year. So, um, Lake Wales, Tashawn Williams, a coach at Lake Wales, he does boys and girls. He's really built that program up. You know, they're they were district champions, region champions, county mm -hmm. champions this year. You know, so they're he's done a really good job with that program. He's got the girls buying in, which is. You know, it's all it's a sport like that. It's about the coaching, you know. <laughs> well, Neil's favorite sport, cheerleading. Well, I tell you what, it's been, they've become a powerhouse here in, in Polk County. Of course, Bartow, you know, we all know that I'm a Bartow yes, guy. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's not just Bartow. I mean, Lakeland goes back to back now. Uh, George Jenkins wins a, a state championship. What was it last weekend or the, the weekend before? But yeah. three state champions in cheerleading. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny. It's you know, for years the cheerleading people wanted to make it a an official sport and and uh, but uh, you know in help for, for Title IX purposes, but the Department of Education wouldn't you know do it. And then about sometime around two, oh, 2005, they changed it. And a couple of years later, it's an official FHA sport. And you know, Polk County has been like one of the powerhouses of, of it. You know, Bar and Bartow obviously has been leading the way for years. And I guess they're pl they're competing this weekend in the national mm -hmm. championship. Uh, I guess over at Disney, I think I mm -hmm. think it is so. Well, I think um, it's, it's it's very comparable to when uh, high school went to fast pitch softball. There was a number of teams that kind of uh, were already moving in that direction, anyway. So, I, I, yeah. you know, Bartow and some of these other teams, like Wales and these other, that were in softball, kind of dominated the state for quite a while and still do. And cheerleading is kind of the same thing. They were ahead of the curve and and doing some fantastic stuff. Speaking of doing fantastic stuff. You can't talk girls soccer without talking about Lakeland Christian. They they continue to be a powerhouse in the state. Yeah, they uh, and it's it's funny they um, with the reclassification they don't have to face St. John's Country Day, who's been beating them every year in the mm -hmm. finals or semis, depending on how the brackets. Uh, and so this they got a great chance of going, except Holy Names is in their region. They, they're in a tough region, mm -hmm. and Holy Names has been a, a powerhouse, and you know they've been they've been the team that's been beating McKeel in the playoffs. So. Um, you know, I was talking to Jason Streets this week, and he was talking about like uh, the region in general. And I go about how tough it is and the challenge, and, and you know how it will be for them. And um, but I said, on the other hand, you know, those teams are saying, oh, heck, "We got to play like Christian," you know. So yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, they're they're, they're, you know, they're junior, you know, well, not just junior. They got juniors, freshmen. They're still kind of young. Like they'll have just about everybody back next year, and they're yeah. deep. So um, he this. You know, they've got a like, nice window this year, next year, to maybe really do something. Real quick on boys' soccer. Excuse me, on girls' soccer. George Jenkins beating Lakeland 2-1. to one. Um, Surprise? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't surprised Jenkins got to the final, even though they, they started off like 1-8, and because they had talent. It was, everybody was scratching their heads. They had some injuries, and they played a tough schedule. But they, they put it together, and in the end, I thought they were a bit stronger than Bartow. 
Winter Haven was real deep, and I thought Winter Haven, you know, was, it was I thought it was their district to win. You know, back in the mid 2000s when Jenkins was winning state and Scott Short was coaching Winter Haven, he had some of his best teams, but up against Jenkins, I go now Winter Haven get their you know, they're back in the same district. Now they can get their you know, so-called <laughs> revenge. Right. And then Lakeland, second year in a row, Lakeland, um, give them credit, they had their number. They got a really good freshman score. Um, and uh, and they played, I was talking to the assistant coach yesterday at Winter Haven, they played like, um, ball. once the ball got in the, you know, in the defensive, the Lakeland defense, Winter Haven on the att attack, they dropped everybody back. You go, they had nine people on defense, you could find no holes, and, and mm. then they missed open nets one time, and one of those things. So, um, so it's Lakeland, was Lakeland Jenkins, and give Jenkins credit. I mean, the, the, you know, they got some talent. Mer America N uh, Abnathy, I, I covered her sister, who was a great athlete, soccer and uh, track, went to Florida State. Uh, you know, she, she, you know, she's really good, and um, so, you know, they had the talent, There's, and they're winning like five in a row now, so we'll see what they do now. <laughs> Absolutely, and of course, one of the, you know, long ago recruited uh, to Polk County, but uh, obviously takes uh, great partnerships in keeping the event here in Polk County, but uh, Lakeland is certainly known to be the home of the FHSA Boys and Girls State Finals. You know, at one time volleyball and wrestling was here, but basketball for a long, long time, except for a brief period, I think they were in Tallahassee, yeah. uh, about three years or something like that, and then they, they realized that that was maybe a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was yeah. a disaster for the, you know, FHSAA. Yeah, the, the boys were at three and the girls, I think, were there five. Yeah. But each season, the, 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 the takeaway is each season, these boys and girls team, their goal is Polk County. Their yeah. goal is the RP Funding Center. And, and you look at uh, girls basketball and you, you decide which way you want to go first, girls basketball or boys basketball. But uh, of course, Winter Haven girls for a long time have been a state power. Uh, but on the boys side, you've got uh, two high schools in Polk County. Now they have the, the rankings and all that. Uh, two of the high schools in Polk County are number one and number three in the overall state rankings. Yeah, I mean, uh, Santa Fe thought they could make Catholic make, make a run last year, and they kind of got tripped up in the, in the in the first round. The senior dominated. You know, they beat Barto at the beginning of the year, but Barto's won 20 straight games since then, or 21. Um, or no, 19. They they it was the third game of the season, so mm -hmm. they won 19 since then. Um, and uh, the only other team that Santa Fe lost to was Winter Haven, which is. Uh, they're going to be really good in the upcoming years. Mm -hmm. So this is Santa Fe's year to, to really make a run and uh, and maybe get that a state title. You don't really think of Santa Fe Catholic for boys basketball, but uh, this, I mean, they're, they're loaded. You know, they've got maybe not too deep, but their starting five is as, you know is as good, good as anyone. Good as well. And then uh, and then boy, I give Barto credit. I mean, I didn't know what to make of Barto coming into the season. They had Walter Clayton come over from Lake Wales. He's uh, being recruited by South Florida. Um, might have picked up some others I haven't uh, updated yet. Um, and then they just, you know, Josh Simons is an undersized, you know, big man. He's like 6'3", but he plays 6'8". But he doesn't do it as a leaper. Like sometimes you see those mm -hmm. short guys, they can jump out of the gym. He's not like that, but he's just strong and mm -hmm. smart and just as tenacious as, you know, all else. And so mm -hmm. he, um, you know, and, the, and they, he, they rotate a lot of players. And you know Terrence McGriff, he, they're going to play defense. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they've, I was I mean, I knew they would be good, but yeah, the one in South Carolina. Every time they play a team, they, you know, the they come out, you know, they've been winning, and they get the Stinger Classic this weekend. So, um, I thought you said it was Mosaic Tournament this weekend. Yeah, the Mosaic well, Stinger yeah, Shootout. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. no, I, I Call it whatever you know. Initial, <laughs> just yeah. let me know what I need to know. I yeah. guess I didn't need to know that one. Apparently, so. yeah. well, <laughs> same, same event. Same okay. event. Yeah, Mosaic <laughs> is the sponsor, and it's a Stinger shootout. Right. So, uh, uh, I go, I go either way with it. Yeah, there you go. There well, you've you kind go. of been involved in that for years, haven't you, Neil? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a great event, and 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 again, talking about boys and girls basketball all the teams in the state trying to get to the RP Funding Center. This is the last competition and strong competition before yeah. the district start. Uh, so for this boys tournament, this invitational shootout, um, this is a dress rehearsal for a lot of these teams because if you look at the program each year, four or five of those teams that year end mm -hmm. up in the state finals. So what they're doing is they're coming in, they're kind of a dress rehearsal, the trip to Polk County, getting ready uh, because they ultimately want to be in Polk County for those state finals. So well, checking out some of the competition too. Absolutely, you absolutely. Know, you know, yeah. You're coming here. You're gonna. Yep. You're yep. gonna get some game. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. It'll be some good matchups, and then with the new um, way they choose teams for the playoffs, will be interesting. You know, 
some like in the one six A district, I think Polk will have three teams in there. Right. And then there are others where if you don't win district, you're not going. You're not going to make <laughs> it. Yeah. Right. You know, it's uh, we didn't talk about it originally, but uh, talk a little just thirty seconds. Uh, wrestling. What's What's Polk County looking like? How are they going to be represented at uh, at state? Well, Lake Gibson will be the the you know power game. Now they didn't win the duels. Uh, right. I think the uh, state title um, it breaks a streak of I think four straight state titles, duels, and then the traditional mm -hmm. state tournament. Um, so uh, that, I think county is coming up this next week for the for that stretch. So we'll see who. Eventually uh, advances, but it's, it starts with Lake Gibson with you know Ashton Habil um, and and you know and Danny Walker that's been doing a great job with that program. So yeah. uh, you know the, the see if they can at least win one of two this year. <laughs> right, absolutely, that's good stuff. Yep, you got your plate full coming up. Yeah, I mean this this, this week is it started real busy. It's like. Uh, I've got to schedule stuff for next week, and I haven't had time to even look at it yet. Yeah, well, <laughs> Trying to get stuff done. I appreciate athlete. what you do because you know I always look forward to reading your stuff, and uh, you know you really have some good writers there at, at, at the Ledger, both you know in the sports department, which is second, in my opinion, second yeah. to none. Just a great group of people, but also the, uh, the editorial board and uh, and the uh, you know the other folks over there. So thank you so much for uh, uh, for joining us today. No, not as well as you, but you're a busy man. Appreciate <laughs> all of your time and insights. All right, great being here. Thank Thanks you, Roy. Well, there's a young lady by the name of Thiago Casta, and she is a, well, she's from Ridge, I always forget the community, I have to take a look, Ridge Community High School. She's a soccer player, and this is one of my favorite parts of each and every show because it's the old up close and personal. Let's meet these kids. Let's meet Thiago, I have to take a look at that one, too. That's a tough one. Anyway, Diego from uh, Costa from Ridge Community High School, a superstar soccer player on the way up. Check it out, everybody. Neil and Mark will be back right after this. My name is Thiago and I am a sophomore and I play mostly on striker for the team. So I've been playing for a long time actually. Um, I've been playing since I was a kid, about five, four. Well, uh, I was around soccer a lot, so um, uh, not that I was forced to play it, but I really liked watching it, so I just wanted to be in the field and play, you know, so I just kind of got motivated by that. Thiago's just got a lot of tools. Uh, he can shoot with his left, shoot with his right. He's got a great burst, um, burst speed. He's fast in general for his size. Um, when you really think about a soccer field, you need to have a quick first step. You know, the first 10 yards, you, you only need to run 30, 40 yards max. So you don't need these long dashes up the field. And he has a very good, hard, um, early step and he's very talented on the ball. He's able to do a lot of, of uh, things that many players can't do. Yeah, I would just say Thiago's a little bit more explosive. Some people say that uh, soccer is a sport for a week, um, and I don't think that is a very uh, contact sport. Since it's 90 minutes most of the time, you have to be running most of the time as well, so you need to be physically fit, and it would be nice if you had a pretty strong body as well because you, especially in high school, are going to be competing against tall people and strong people. So um, My coaches are very hard on me, um, and that's not a bad thing because they actually want me to go to the next level. So that's a thing I value a lot. I mean, you have to have your head in the game, you know, you have to be focused. And a good attitude is a good thing to have when you're a soccer player because you're going to have to be a leader uh, at one point, and it just takes responsibility as well because have to take care of your team and everything. Well, we have a very close relationship, actually. We've been playing for a while now in club, and now we're into high school, so we're pretty close with each other. We have four or five sophomores 
and freshmen starting. Five, five freshmen and sophomores starting at the varsity level. Uh, presently, Thiago is uh, leading the team in goals uh, with one of our seniors. Uh, many of the teams that we're playing are senior and junior laden teams. And you can easily see a talent difference between uh, their skill sets and what some of the competition is, is bringing up against them. Thiago's a straight A student. I truly believe he's gonna have opportunities no matter what he does. We, with club, um, we've won a lot of titles. So those are really good to remember. And just playing with my dad and training with people, this, those are really good memories too. I'm trying to go to college, play for college, or either um, make pros if I can. I, want, I really want soccer as a professional career for myself, so. We're just so blessed to have such great athletes in Polk County. Of yeah. course, June 9th, the Polk County All Sports Awards, the 2020 version. Uh, maybe we'll see. June 9th this year. It's earlier. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, with the with where the calendar is and, and the when school ends and things I, like I, that. You know, I so. think that works out better. I, I really think that the earlier um, yeah. we have it towards the end of the school year makes a lot of sense. Right. And we couldn't do that event without the great partnership with the Ledger, and they are actually this segment's sponsor, so we want to thank them. And of course, many thanks to the Ledger and Roy Fuco for mm -hmm. joining us in segment number three. Well, this would be segment number four. Yes, sir. And this is our opportunity to let you know what's going on within Polk County, and there is so much we are not going to be able to get to it, <laughs> but we're going to hit the highlights. And one of the highlights right now, Neil, is, is what's going on this weekend, yep. and uh, today, uh, at least as we film this, or we don't film it, we're live, right. um, is the Tournament of Champions, yep. Senior Softball USA, 107. 107. 107 teams, yep. Not 105, 107 of the, really, the world's best senior softball players. But they, they start at 40, and this year they had eight teams in the 80-plus age Fantastic. division. That's fantastic. Next year, they're anticipating having two teams in the 90-plus category. Well, there's a direct correlation between staying active and staying. Yeah. <laughs> staying well, the, the <laughs> annual bank, the, the banquet for the tournament was last night. It was the RP Funding Center. Mm -hmm. had the, uh, uh, the honor of being the MC for that. Yeah. And I look out over this massive seat. At the banquet, this, there's more athletes that are participating mm -hmm. in the event, 1,400. Yep people were at that event last night. Well, it's unbelievable. Un it's unbelievable. You, you talk about the Tigers and you talk about Russ Matt baseball and those getting ready to start, but that's kind of uh, one of those events that we always love this time of year because of the huge economic impact, uh, but again, relationships and long-term commitments on both sides. Huge, huge event for Polk County. We're just pleased to have it. Well, it's kind of, uh, it sounds kind of odd, but you almost look forward to, you know, being around town and you go check out this mm -hmm. stuff and people start griping at you because those people I can't get in my favorite restaurant when I walk out. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're going, hey, <laughs> they're dumping money off in this county. Yeah. You know, it's good. Do you like jobs in this county? Do you like tax relief? Do right. you like new revenue? Right. Well, yeah. Well, then maybe just wait a couple extra minutes. Say hello. <laughs> at Gary's Oyster Bar and uh, you'll be fine. Yeah, and uh, we talked about Quidditch uh, before. That's coming up February 14th through the 16th. But you talk about some of those non-traditional events uh, recruited to Polk County. Uh, maybe not a softball event, maybe not a baseball event. The Central Florida Spelling Bee will be February, excuse me, let me try it again. February 28th, that's at the Lake Eva Park in Haines City. Uh, there'll be more than 40 uh, schools represented there, and uh, it's a great, and then the winner of that qualifies for the Scripps National Spelling Bee, so they will represent uh, Polk County and visit Central Florida when they go into Washington, D.C. So that is a tremendous event. We're looking forward to that. Well, Neil, we have some people to thank, and uh, thank we will. Absolutely. Days in Lakeland Abuelos, Office Furniture Depot, the Lakeland Magic, and the Holiday Inn Lakeland. Great partners of tourism and sports. Yeah, and don't forget, everybody, our sister show on WLKF 96.7 FM, The Max. And we also have uh, WLKF 1430 AM. So check those shows out, 5 o'clock to 6, drive time, prime drive time. 
prime drive time. There we go. Every Thursday night, one of the most popular shows in all of Central Florida, Sports Central. Well, everyone, really thank you. And on behalf of Neil Duncan, this is Mark Jackson telling you, letting you know, February 21st is our final, excuse me, is our next live show. Maybe my final show the way I'm going today. Holy well, I just smokes, it's been a rough day. <laughs> yeah, but every once in a while you have those. You know, it, it has just truly been so busy. And, uh, you know, Neil, you, you look around and you're driving around and you just see all these athletes mm -hmm. in town. You know, and then you couple that with all the stuff that's going on with arts and culture. And Central Florida's Polk County is the place to be, the place to play. And it just doesn't get any better than that. And we're in the prime spot when these people are freezing to death up north. That's right. Visit centralflorida.org for the website. There you go. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We'll see you again next time.